Hi, it's Lynn Ann. And I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia uh, over 20 years ago. And I had pain, woke up in the morning feeling like I was run over by a truck. I had difficulty walking a couple times in stores with I was with my husband. My husband actually had to carry me out. I just I, I walked and then I just couldn't walk. I just my legs quit. And um, at one point I was actually in a wheelchair. Um, and uh, I was diagnosed after having depression. Um, I ended up, uh, a doctor started me on some antidepressants because I was depressed and not really knowing why, but I was depressed. And, you know, now that I look back, I know that it was because I was having uh, all the pain, but not actually acknowledging the pain. I just was popping Tylenol or Advil or whatever to manage the pain and drinking coffee with it. Because of course, those two things, caffeine and um, pain, over-the-counter pain meds tend to work with pain or can. Um, however, once I was on the anti um, antidepressant, I actually ended up in the hospital because of um, suicidal ideations and they needed to get me off and they have they need to take you off antidepressants very slowly so I ended up in the hospital under observation to make sure that everything went well and during that time um I I was having an enormous amount of headaches as well and somebody suggested going to a chiropractor now normally um back you got to remember 25 years ago chiropractor was considered alternative and you didn't do that because they were terrible. Um, and, and now, of course, they're much more accepted in our society. Um, but back then they weren't. And uh, so I did go. I'm a nurse by background. So I thought, well, I, I mean, I'm, nothing's working. So I need to do something because life is not wonderful. So, um, you know, I'm barely coping. I'm going to I, I was going to work. But when I got home, I was lay, basically laying on the couch and I had children. Um, so that wasn't a good thing. They were all in school, but they uh, it was I couldn't do anything with them and barely able to function once I hit home. So. When I actually went to the doctor and uh, with a chiropractor and I had to check off the list of all the things that were going on with me, he um, said, I think you have fibromyalgia. Go take this list and go see your doctor. So, of course, I've been going to the doctor for this and that and the other thing. And I don't think he actually put it together until it was all on the list. And he goes, oh, my goodness. And of course, back then, fibromyalgia was considered um, probably not a real diagnosis. So he was like, don't tell anybody because they will, won't let you work anymore. Um, however, I was fortunate enough to have a wonderful employer um, who was very compassionate and very helpful. And I did tell her because I had to be off for a while. Um, I ended up, and interesting, he, he was Chinese by um, background and of course had some of that information that wasn't back then allowed like you were any doctors medical doctors back then weren't even allowed to suggest vitamins or um looking at your diet which of course is totally different now but back then it wasn't so he's saying to me uh, don't tell anybody but you need to be on some vitamin b's and you need to do meditation he actually led a little meditation a class for us there were several of us that had been diagnosed with that so it was kind of interesting and unfortunately he um, had a car accident and was killed so but he was kind of instrumental in my journey for natural uh, looking at natural things because obviously the antidepressants weren't an answer for me and they I'm not he actually that doctor actually said that I, there isn't really an answer for you so you need to look at some other things so that's what started me on my journey and um and I know that there's medications and stuff that for some people work, some people, the, the side effects are not great. And um, that can make a difference for, for people. So what have I been doing to help me? Because really, I enjoy life. I am not depressed. I have fun and have had fun for the last 15 years. I have had very, very little pain. Um, so once in a while, I did have a flare back in um, probably a year and a half ago. I did something, you know, like I know the things that I need to do and not do. And I did something. I stood and, and w didn't change my position good enough. And I ended up dislocating a couple of ribs and uh, triggering all the pain and all those kind of things again. And so that was not healthy. And anyhow, just a, just a reminder for me to keep doing what works for me. So what works for me? So to start with, I because of 
my first diagnosis and being depressed, I did end up going for counseling with a psychiatrist and um, a psychologist and doing some counseling around that. Did cognitive behavior therapy, which was very successful, you know, which I found very helpful. Um, I did, it helps with the thought things. Now I did stuff around essential oils and actually I, in my opinion, it was a essential oils that broke me of the pain cycle, you know, where you uh, constantly have pain. And that broke, I had was after my daughter actually did some stuff with me with essential oils and it, I actually was pain free for two days. So as a nurse, I wasn't very um, receptive to essential oils, but I would have to say that after that, I did start studying it and I have my integrated aromatic science practitioner certificate at, because I want to integrate it into my nursing practice. And I felt like I couldn't use it without knowing. Plus, I wanted to know why it was working and nothing else was working. So um, that's. I use, and if you want to know more about essential oils or if they would work for you, just um, con connect with me. I'll put some, my information down below so you can, um, I'm happy to help you with that. And will they work for everybody? I don't know. Um, you, I do know you need to use good oils and you need to use uh, pure oils. So that piece does make a difference because I used oils uh, that weren't as use, as good as um, what I'm currently using. So um, it does make a difference on the oils as well. So that was one of the things that, and that was, wasn't, wasn't the only thing. Cause when I started using them, I realized that, um, I was, it was helping me to clean up my body. Um, I changed some of the food. Like I was a really heavy coffee drinker, which is caffeine, which of course, um, stimulates and that wasn't good for me. And I was also not eating a lot health wise. So even if I was taking good food, vitamins, uh, coffee tends to deplete some of the vitamins out of your system. So I was, you know, not, I wasn't being healthy. So I started eating healthy, eliminating sugar out of my diet, reducing my caffeine. So it's, currently I still drink some caffeine, but I have like my cup of coffee in the morning. That's pretty much all I have now. I mean, I was up to 10 or 15 cups of coffee a day. Like I lived on coffee. Um, so that was definitely not good and probably would contribute to a lot of the issues as well. Um, so uh, I did stop the caffeine, reduce my caffeine, increase the amount of good food. And I did take some supplements like some magnesium, some MSM, some SAMI. Actually, SAMI was really good. And I at that time, it wasn't available in Canada. And I had to go over to the US and get it. But it is available in Canada now. I don't know if it, where else is available. But it, it was very helpful in helping me get out of the um, the depression piece. Now, I, I also did some things around setting boundaries because I was because you're doing a lot trying to avoid a lot of things. I was work, being a workaholic, to be honest. And uh, so I had to send some boundaries around work, working as well as self-care because part of feeling better, I mean, if you don't look after your body, your body tells you, you look after you. So that's what I had to do. I did had to take some time and, and to do work on that, um, exercise. Yeah. Uh, uh, back to my diet. So the other things I did was making sure I, I eliminated aspartame or any of the sweeteners, artificial sweeteners out there because I found that they actually were a trigger for my headaches. Um, eating less processed food, eating more natural food, eating um, lots of vegetables, though I would have to say I was actually a very good fruit vegetable eater when I ate, but I just did more of that, less caffeine and more food, which would help build up my system. Yeah, I did, uh, what else did I do? Oh, one of the things that I, in my journey, and this is not something that you start and do it all in one day. Like as I learned things, I learned that I needed to not, as I was cleaning up what was going in my body, I needed to clean up other things that I was touching because it, your skin absorbs all that stuff and you inhale it. So I took out the chemicals in my house. I, you know, I'm a nurse, so I had to make sure everything was super clean. So I had all these cleaning products that at work were actually people had to wear protective equipment for. Um, I was actually using them without any of that, of course, because you technically household cleaning, you don't need, there is no requirement to do that, but obviously it was a required, I needed to do that. So I, I eliminated all my household 
um, chemicals and replace them with a plant-based chemical, uh, plant-based cleaner that worked for everything. And that was um, one of the things I did. I also um, did, a, I had some testing done and I was really heavy. I had a lot of heavy metals in my system, specifically mercury. So I did a detox with, with about mercury. And I also um, as I, as my journey went, I did do that and then realized I, you know, I still had a lot of mercury and as I was a, I grind my teeth, which of course is part of tension. And, um, and I still, I can tell if I wake up in the morning tight, I was like, okay, if something's happening, I'm getting tense again and I need to uh, do some relaxation stuff. But, uh, so I did really move what I have, whatever, um, fillings that I had of mercury in my teeth removed and replaced with something else. Now, I mean, I, I agree with the dentist. He says, who knows down the road, those, what they've replaced it with might cause problems, but it certainly made a difference. Uh, like, I feel like it made a difference to me getting rid of doing that detox with the mercury and getting rid of them. Um, and, and there, I, there is some studies that show that it might do that, but um, I, I don't know. I worked for me. That's all I know. Um, can you get testing for that? I'm not really sure how you do that. I mean, I did, it was a urine test I did over a period of time that we had to send in. Um, and I had it done in the US. I don't know if it's available in Canada or not. I was just, I happened to be at a seminar. It was called Extreme Health. And they had a lot, you know, things that are and hit the market yet that they had available and that were still not mainstream. So that was one of the things I did. And some of the stuff that we did back then are mainstream mainstream now but anyways that was one of the things I did hydration I was obviously if I was drinking a lot of coffee caffeine I was not I was being very dehydrated which is really bad for your system and your cells and making them work properly so I um, am conscious of trying to make sure I drink lots if you've had trauma in your back and it's in your background and it's interesting, I would not have said I did, but I kind of forgot about it. And, it's, and as my journey went, and of course, um, I think our lives are a little like when you start doing your journey, your life is, I mean, my opinion is like an onion, you peel off one section and then there's something else that shows up and something else. And and it's, it's only within the last three or four years that the, I, I mean, I did go for counseling for the sexual assault that happened. Um and you think you've dealt with it, but there are different emotions and layers to that. Like the, so I had to deal with that again. So um, getting some work done around that. Um, I also use chiropractor. I used a lot of that. Obviously, I went there. It was very helpful at keeping my body in alignment because when you're when you're tense or stressed, um, certain muscles um, tighten up and then it pulls stuff out of alignment, and then your body doesn't function properly. And I I did. Um, that as well as massage with it. And I, I, when I was in my active part of my journey where I was doing a lot of therapy and stuff, I actually went for a chiropractor at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. And because I was so out of tight and out of alignment that it took that much to get it going, uh, relaxed enough and massage once a week. But now I um, don't do, uh, rarely go, I need to go to the chiropractor once in a while. I do still, and I, I can tell when I need to go, I start getting headaches again. And I know that it's my shoulders are an issue and, um, gets, cause it's usually my upper back that bothers me the most. And sometimes my hip. So those are some things that I've, uh, still do massage. I like to do that. And I still use the essential oils. I don't use them a lot now. Originally I used them for the pain and I, you know, basically covered my body in them. And, and oh. but it, uh, like, I think when you have a chronic pain, you have your nor from what I understand, the neurons in your brain get a, like a tunnel and it's hard to change that. So it took a while, but after about a year, I really did not have any pain. And, um, it was kind of interesting. I had a, a colleague stop into my office and say, Oh, and then you must have had a horrible winter. And I'm going, what are you talking about? I don't have a horrible winter. And she goes, I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, I don't, you don't, your hot packs. Cause I used to literally, um, I was in so much pain that I would have hot packs on my shoulders and hot packs wrapped around my wrists so that I could actually use my computer. Um, for any length of time so and I was like oh I have no idea where they were so sometimes your your journey is so um 
little bits by little bits. It, it's almost like you need someone who ha hasn't seen you for a long time to see how far you've come. Because at that point, it was like, oh, my goodness, I didn't even need them. I had no pain. And um, and that was about a year after using essential oil. So so that's been quite a few years ago now. That's probably 15 years ago. And I've had very little pain, as I said. So I hope you um, there were some things in here that will help you. If you would like to chat anytime, get in contact with me and I'd be happy to do that. And have an, I wish for you to have a good life and to enjoy life again, because, you know, it, there's a grieving process for that too, that your life is not the same as it was before. And that is a little bit of a part of the journey, but you know what? It may not be the way it was before, but you can still enjoy life and find things that will be helpful and things that will be so that you can do the th travel um, work. If that's something you like to do, volunteer, see your grandkids, play with your kids, whatever it is. I wish that for you.